Buenos dias. I am the tinkerer, and this is where I do my tinkering. Inside, at least, for now, because it's freaking cold outside. And have a look. I have a knife. I have some paracord. I have some fishing sinkers. Trusty Swiss Army knife. What do you think I'm going to do? Cue Jeopardy delay music. Right. Back when I was, oh, well, let me see. Somewhere in the order of 50 years ago, my teacher spent some time in South America, and she told us about the gauchos. And instead of lassos, like we use up here in America, they used something called bolas. Bolas being Spanish for balls. And bolas are basically three, sometimes more, weighted balls on the end of a length of rawhide, approximately two, two and a half feet long usually, but could be longer, which they would spin and throw to snag an animal around its feet. Uh, catch the legs, bring it down, nifty thing. I tried to build one when I was about eight, nine years old. Yeah, didn't come out so well because, uh, you know, they didn't let me work with leather punches and, you know, have leather and leather shears and all those kind of nifty things. But I'm a big boy now and I can play with sharp things. And I decided to make one again, but I wanted one that was upgraded to modern materials. The kind of thing that you could put together in a survival situation. You didn't have much else to work with. You're going to have your paracord because if you don't, you're a loser. You can probably get weights of some kind. You can make one of these. Now, I upgraded to something a little more modern here. I picked up some fishing weights. It looks like it's just about the ideal shape. It's nice and dense. It's aerodynamic. It's already got a loop for attaching to a line. These are perfect. I think. We're going to find out. The only problem I had is my line. A little difficulty getting through the hole. The hole's just a little too small. So, using my trusty Swiss Army knife all, I use this to open up the hole to be big enough to get the paracord through. A note about lead. It's okay to handle it, but do wash your hands before you make a sandwich. That's pretty much it. Lead is safe to handle. What you don't want to do is ingest it. So it's okay to, to do this. Next problem. I'm going to get a piece of line. And I'm going to be generous, four feet long or so. Because it will probably end up being a little less than two, two and a half feet. But we have knots to tie and things to trim. So, a little bit of access. The tricky part now is getting this through that little hole. What we need is tape. Wrap it in a, at an angle to get it down to a point. Try to get it as tight as I can. I may have actually used too much tape here so it will be too big to go through, but. I'm going to wing it and see if it works on the first try. Hey, hot spit. Uh, these weights, by the way, Walmart, $3 and change for three of them. This is the two and a half ounce weight. I, of course, did have much larger and much smaller ones. I got a few smaller ones. 
And now tying this off, you can use whatever knot works for you. I actually went with the hangman's noose. And now I'm going to make a fool of myself and see if I can make it work again on camera. Hmm. Going for five or six loops. That's a little much. Let me give me a little bit more here. behind going with the, the noose is it's fairly easy to undo if you need to get your cord back out of this you can and there you go okay cut see perfect the uh, hangman's new shoe, pull it from one side to tighten it up, and pull it from the other side. A little twist in there, there you go. Tighten that up. Reason for doing this with the hangman's news, it's fairly easy to untie so you can recover your line from it. And I like it because it kind of uh, stiffens it a little bit near the weight. And the ones that I saw that were made um, from rawhide, rawhide's banded or woven rawhide's fairly stiff. And I actually think that at least having some stiffness in this area is good. It kind of helps keep the weight out away from the rest of the rope. Kind of helps it straighten out in flight. Uh, that's just a theory. Well, I got that about where I want it. I'm going to cut the paracord off. Reasonably tight. Melt the end. Real good. And I'm going to use one of the other ones I already did to mash that so that it's less likely to pull back through. I did two others previously. And the knot on the uh, putting the, the three together is just a pretty simple square knot. A little basic granny knot. There are my three weights. The line I'm going to cut it out to, uh, from my hand to about the center of my chest. And then just tie a knot. I'm going to give myself a little bit of room in case I want to make it a little longer or shorter. not so neat. So I cut that part of the video out. Give these a heat treatment. And here we have a survival bola. Muy bueno. Now, 
I did do a smaller one using the smaller weights. Where did I put that? Stand by. I found them. These, I pulled the uh, inner cords from uh, Paracord. And I thought a smaller one like this, these are half ounce, half ounce weights. Uh, this might be good for birds, small targets. Um, what I have here is way too darn long. Let me cut this off. Now I have, using, ooh, maybe a total of 12 feet of paracord, two bolas. A tiny one for small targets like birds. And this one a little bit bigger for geese, possibly even deer. I mean, I'd, I'd be impressed if somebody brought a deer down with one of these, could get close enough to use it, but I suppose it's possible. Now, of course, we, we have to go out and try these, don't we? Remember what I said about the rawhide, the braided rawhide, being kind of stiff. And I thought that actually helped keep the, uh, make the ball separate and keep them away from the string as it was in flight. I got an idea after I put it all together. So I made a run up to Harbor Freight and bought a cheap bag of heat shrink that I noticed on a previous visit. And in there, there happened to be three pieces of heat shrink tubing. Oh, let me see, there's eight. That's probably about 10 or 11 inches long. And I heat shrunk it onto my cord. And look now, it's still flexible, but it's definitely not as floppy as paracord tends to be. And I think, I think that's a good thing to do. Now, you can say, well, Tinker, you can't really necessarily do that in a survival mode situation. Well, maybe not exactly this, but... You could wrap it with duct tape, which of course you also have in your emergency kit with your paracord, or you're a loser. So, get yourself cheap heat shrink, and I'll show you how I got it on to this. It is a little hard to get it through there. So I used the same thing I did before. I'm going to nip that end off because it, it was melted and flared. And a little bit of tape. And I got a USB cable. Chopped one head off of it because we don't have enough of these lying around. Can't spare one. But it is stiff enough and slippery enough. Okay, I, I tried to push this through and it's like pushing a, you know, trying to push a rope through a tube. And if you've ever tried to push a rope through a tube, you know that's an unsatisfying experience for everyone involved. So, this is a little stiffer. And she'll go right through. Pretty much right end to end. Doesn't take much, just gotta hold it together. Get her 
started. These things had a pretty good natural ability to tangle. I think that's part of the design. All right, it's on. I'm going to separate the uh, remnants of the USB cable. I'm going to zoom back a touch. I said back. Hold it straight up and dangling. I have a heat gun right here. And shrink. We've got to hit both sides. Make sure you got it all the way. And there you go. I'm going to kind of keep it straight until it cools a little bit. I'll do the other one off camera. Okay, all back together. I can still wrap this up and fit it into a small package. But you can see there's definitely a little springiness, a little stiffness here that Paracord doesn't have. So when that's thrown, that's really going to tend to keep them spread apart and flight. I think that's a winner. Now if the temperature ever gets above Mars, we'll take it out and give it a try. And you have a valid criticism to say that, well, you couldn't do this heat shrink bit, you know, in the field in, the, in an emergency situation. I agree, but I do believe you can get the same effect pretty well by wrapping a length of cord with duct tape, which you should have in your kit anyway. Again, this can be wrapped up. It's still going to have enough flexibility, certainly, to slap and wrap around something, but it's just enough stiffness. It's actually pretty darn similar to to the heat shrink to give it that little bit of springiness I think is worthwhile. One video that I saw while researching for this uh, by a guy who's in South America so he must know what he's talking about. said the gauchos would actually use this as a weapon. Now, of course the balls they were using were stone wrapped in leather probably a good two inches across. Three of those put a fairly serious smacking on you. That's a that is a possible hand-to-hand -hand weapon as well as a, uh, a throwing ensnaring weapon. Not something I'd want to get hit with. So 
I think that's ready for a field test. I also got to thinking about these little guys. These really tend to get tangled pretty easily. I think maybe for them to be effective, they might need the same treatment. I've noticed if you just kind of hold them, they will tend to uh, unravel themselves pretty nicely. But this is so thin. You could use fishing line for this in a, in a pinch as well. I wanted to slip that in there. If I just hold it by the knot, they will untangle for the most part. I got to thinking that this kit also has a smaller diameter weight in it. Hmm. What do you think? Yeah, let's do it. So here you have the result. The smaller lightweight, which is a little shorter. I shortened it up a bit and I tied several little knots in here just so it was a little easier to grab with my pudgy fingers. If I let it hang, it will pretty much, well, almost entirely, separate itself. Uh, but I'm pretty sure that having them all separate is something that you want before you throw it. I, I shortened it up a little bit because I figured the lighter would want to go faster. This would spin faster. I'm also not sure that white is the best color for this. You know, perhaps something dark would be a little more, uh, you know, less alarming to a creature you were trying to throw it at. But nonetheless, I'll take that as it is. I also took a, an inch long piece of a larger diameter black and put it over the, uh, the weight, the eyelet, to give it a little more strain relief there. And I think uh, and it also helps hold it straight and I think it looks I think it looks good too. A little protect the knot. I like that. The big boy here. I think that's it's not a bad weapon as a hand-to-hand -hand weapon. I would think that uh, a handful of that not something you'd want to get smacked with. Definitely, it's not something I'd want to get smacked with. When you uh, do want to experiment with these, do not use the family pets or your little sister. Uh, these will hurt. You're, you're essentially throwing really heavy lead weights or rocks or whatever you use at somebody uh, that are spinning and going very fast and could really hurt, could really do some serious damage. So it's not not toys. Obviously in an emergency survival situation you're trying to you know get some food or protect yourself, that's a different matter. Just like any weapon. They're not toys. Don't use these on a living thing that you don't want to hurt. Our next step, take them out and try them.